Welcome to the Psychology Club podcast, brought to you by Vicente Martinez High School. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Vicente Martinez High School podcast for Psychology Club. Today we have Yuri Buchler and Elizabeth Abruzzini. Yuri is from Olympic High School in Concord, and Elizabeth is from Greenwood Academy in Richmond. Uh, let's give them a nice warm welcome. All right, let's start off with names. I am Nick. Hi, I'm Chris. Yuri. Elizabeth. Alex. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> All right. So, Chris, you have the first question. Um, what is a continuation high school, and what do you think a model continuation high school is? I can go. Um, <laughs> I think the standard definition for a continuation high school is a, a, a smaller school setting um, that serves students who struggled at uh, comprehensive schools. Usually the students are credit deficient, need to recover credits, and um, the, the continuation high schools are there to support them in that endeavor. And what was the second part of the question? Uh, what is a model? A model. High school. Don't read the paper. Well, <laughs> you're reading off the paper. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a model continuation high school checks a bunch of other boxes. They don't just help the students graduate and recover credits, but they support their socio-emotional, mental health. They, they help them as a whole person. And they do a lot of things that a traditional school and a, and a, a regular uh, continuation high school doesn't do. They have a lot more options and, and supports. Elizabeth, did you have any, do you have any inputs? Yes. I think continuation schools are for exceptional people. I really do believe that. I'm not just talking about st the students are exceptional from my experience, but I think the staff is exceptional. I think the office staff, everybody has to be exceptional for it to work. And that's why I love working at a continuation school. Uh, what are some of the stigmas, prejudices, and biases that you have seen about continuation schools and their students? They're the bad kids. Like we, we hear it a lot from the, I taught at a comprehensive school at one point, and I, I hear it from the students who come in new and, and around the district. We have a really bad reputation because they haven't been to our school and they haven't seen us in action, and they don't know how amazing our students are, how amazing our staff is. And we kind of like keeping it that way because we're, in a way, the, the secret of the district and the students who come to us, they know that and they come back later on and, and, and prove that they're not the bad kids. Yeah. My students, when I told them I was leaving to go to a continuation school, they all couldn't believe it. They were like, I can't believe you would go there. Those are all the bad kids go. You know, you're not going to like it. You'll be back here. And I love it. It's totally not what people say it is. And I, I kind of like that it is a hidden gym. I, I love working there. We're a small staff, small um, class sizes. The kids get more attention. Yeah, I really enjoy it. What issues do you think teens face today? Well, can I start? Yeah, go for it. Um, one thing that I have noticed since I started teaching is there's a lot more pressure to, I don't want to say market yourself, but social media is such a big thing now with teenagers. And it wasn't like that. I was in high school years ago. Two. Sure. <laughs> Over 10 years ago. <laughs> I was in high school. Um, and it just wasn't like that. All my students, I, I, not all, but I see a lot of my students trying to always like one up each other and market themselves differently on their social media. And there's so much pressure to, you know, project this certain lifestyle and they almost like live in that world. So, and, and I noticed like it does, it does take a toll and it, it puts a lot of pressure on them that I did not have in high school. Um, I I think that students today face a lot of the same challenges that we did and our parents and grandparents. There, there is the new challenges as well, but I, I think that the biggest challenges I see for my students is, is an addiction to their electronics, um, absenteeism, drug and alcohol substance abuse, and mental health um, struggles. And so I think that that's something which I, I think that as a school, as a community, as a society, that we should really help um, students with. What is your opinions on teens in general? They're horrible. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I, I see how no, I, I'm joking. Uh, I like to look at teens as uh, young adults. I mean, our school starts with compre comprehensives have students from 14 to 18 or whatever that is. Here at continuation schools, we have you know 16 to 20 years old, something like that. And in most nations around the world, I spent a lot of time in Europe, um, 16 is an adult. And I think that I like to treat my students and I like to 
treat the teens as adults and I expect them to act like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to have fun, it's good to laugh, it's, you know, um, but at the same time, we've got a job to do, you guys have got to graduate, we've got to teach, and we need to get down to business. And so I, I re highly respect teens because they're coming into adulthood and, uh, yeah. yeah. Teens are figuring out who they are as mm -hmm. our young adults, you know, so it's, you, you get, when you're teaching high school, you get them kind of right, not in the middle, because they've been figuring out their whole lives, but you get them in that zone where they're about to go out and, you know, get their job or start college or whatever it is they're going to do after high school. And you're, you're there for the beginning stages of them figuring out who they will be as an adult. And that's really cool to watch. And I used to teach freshmen and now I teach seniors. It's really cool to see a student grow from a freshman to a senior. It's like the coolest thing ever. They're almost a completely different person. Mm -hmm. um, just in the maturity and experiences that they've had those four years. Or from 18 to right. 24 and right. they come back, yeah. you know, and tell you about their job and their, their future and how they're making things happen. It's really nice to see people um, progress in life and to know that you had something to do with, with that. Awesome. Uh, what are some things that you think could help teens with their mental health? I think just availability of someone safe to talk to. Um, at the two schools I've worked at, there's been a full service um, health center at both schools, and that's Oh, I can't even imagine what it would be like if we didn't have those things. Students are getting the services they need. They trust their counselors in there. Um, and it also helps their relationship with teachers, too. Just the teachers having the extra support of someone they can work with um, just to figure out what's going on with the student. I think the having that extra support, that's something my school, I don't think, had. If it did, I wasn't aware of it. But I'm noticing a lot more schools have those now, and it's awesome. I think I would answer with tolerance and acceptance. I mean, tolerance at the bare minimum of yourself um, and hopefully acceptance of yourself as a person and then of others, right? If we can tolerate at least and hopefully accept other people and ourselves, then it helps a lot, I think, with the mental portion. I mean, just being okay with talking about issues. We all have them. We've all been through stuff. Um, and just being okay with being able to talk to other people in an open, safe environment, I think. What was your biggest struggle as a teen, and how did you overcome it? Oh, we even talked about this. You're not, but not on camera. Yeah, not on camera. Yeah, I don't know how much I'm uh, willing to speak on camera about this, but uh, no, I've struggled with a, a lot of issues as, as a teen um, into adulthood. Um, I barely graduated high school. Had a lot of friends um, involved in substances and drugs and such. Um, I can't pinpoint one thing. I was just bored in school. So, I mean, my struggle was graduating, I guess, more than mm -hmm. anything. Um, How did you overcome it? Like, what helped you? I overcome it? I just got my work done in the end. And then I realized college is so much better than high school. And mm -hmm. it's, you get to focus on what you want to learn. And uh, things like psychology, philosophy, you know, were interests to me. And so I did really well when I got to college. And I was like, oh, this isn't so bad. High school sucked, but <laughs> this college thing ain't bad at all. For me, my struggles were more at home. We were moving a lot. Money was an issue. My parents would argue about money a lot. That was stressful. And I was just getting to be old enough to understand it. Um, and I had younger siblings that I was kind of trying to protect from them hearing about, you know, you know, we don't have money to pay for the electricity or whatever this month. Um, so school for me was my like refuge. I really liked school. I played sports. I, I don't know, when I was in a classroom, it was structured. It's where I wanted to be. Um, my parents are loving parents. I also liked being at home with them, but it was like, I knew if I went home, I knew that when I got home, I was going to hear about, you know, the bills and that kind of stuff. And that was stressful. So I really did look to school to kind of get away from that and friends, going to friends' houses. Mm -hmm. That was deep. That was really deep. <laughs> this makes, that, that makes this next question I'm about to ask kind of look kind of stupid, but um, what, what's your favorite hot sauce? <laughs> I actually did research for this. Um, I'll, I'll, let, I'll have to pull up a pic. I took a picture inside my fridge today. We'll put her picture right there. The different bottles. Right, right here. Yeah. Where? Right, like, right, right, like, right there. Are right, you see it? Yeah. Better. All right. Don't. Um, go ahead while I'm looking at my picture. I prefer to make my own hot sauce. Okay. We'll put a picture of his here. Yes, I, I make <laughs> multiple different kinds. Usually vinegar based, but uh, I prefer it store bottom. 
So I, my husband and I recently got into the show Hot Ones, so we started buying a bunch of hot sauces just because we're, we, and we did try to bomb, and it's a mistake, don't do it. Um, but one that's pretty mild that we found is called um, Ring of Fire Mezcaljete Especial, and it's in like a bottle, kind of exactly like a sriracha bottle. I don't know, we pull that up mm-hmm. like That's really yeah, good on everything. It's yeah. pretty mild, but it's got like just enough, I think it's like chipotle based. And then another one I like is called Ricante Manzana Incendida. So apple on fire. Oh. That one's good too. It's kind of like tangy and fruity, but also hot. Awesome. Anyway, yeah. Really yeah. something else on fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Thank you for watching today's episode of the Psychology Club podcast. Uh, are we going to post links to their schools in the description? You can find more information down below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever we post our next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Probably tomorrow. Peace.